Next to brave the sharks, an entrepreneur who could be from another planet. Hi, sharks. My name is Luke Wilson. I'm from Townsville, and I'm better known as Captain Active. Now, I'm asking today for $50,000 investment for a 20% share in the future Captain Active Empire. Our world has a big, big problem. So, I've come all the way from Active Land, past the Milky Way, to planet Earth to show kids and families how much fun they can have being active, eating <laughs> awesome, yummy, active food, and going on outdoor adventures together. Now, all the games that Captain Active shows kids and families how to play are heaps and heaps and heaps of fun. None more so than Bottom Shuffle. Sharks, who wants to play Bottom Shuffle with me? All you need is a <laughs> pair of pants and be keen to have a bit of a laugh. Come on, who's up for a game of Bottom Shuffle? Who's there with me? Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Grab a seat on the edge there, mate. Grab a seat on Sitting the edge. Sitting down on the carpet. Oh, on the right carpet. Right here, like this. Oh, God. OK. Feet out in front of you. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you've got to move your bottom. Yeah. We're going that way first. OK. OK, can't bend your legs. Keep your hands off the ground. You've got to shuffle on your bottom. Keep the hands off the ground. Ready? We're going this like way. This. Ready? On your mark. Get yeah. set. Go. Bottom shuffle, bottom shuffle, bottom shuffle. Go this way. Bottom shuffle, bottom shuffle, bottom shuffle. Go on. Wait. Backwards. Go backwards. Bottom shuffle, bottom shuffle. Forwards. Bottom shuffle, bottom shuffle. Yeah. I got it. Awesome. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice one. Oh, oh, great game. Oh. Wow. OK, now, how is this a business? Well, mm. I've got four volumes of awesome active DVDs three self-published children's books, we've got Captain Active sporting equipment and Captain Active apparel. <laughs> also, I've got a 10-week online health and fitness program and I've developed a proposal to create a children's TV show, obviously based around Captain Active, and I go to schools and kindies and local events. So, sharks, it's up to you. Who's going to be an awesome active shark? Be active, just like... Captain Active. Ooh. Well done. Well done, yeah, Captain well done. Active. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. You. you can take your hood off, I think. So I we can, can take see. my hood off? <laughs> yeah. Right, so right. we, we may see. need to blow this out because our kids don't normally see my face. All right, OK. <laughs> OK, Clark Kent. Oh, there we yeah. go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so Luke's looking for $50,000 for 20%, right? <laughs> What are your sales like? Yeah, not a huge amount at this point, honestly, yeah. uh, because I'm still early in the what? piece. So How much? Grand, How much? About 5000 uh, in, in total worth. sales at this okay. point. How do you get your work at the moment? How do you find customers? Social media has been a lot of it and word of mouth. I haven't been able to put a lot of money into marketing, and that's where I see, I guess, the investment, and uh, if, if, if possible with, with yourselves, I can see trying to show people on a bigger scale what Captain Active is, because I know it works. I just need to let people know. How scalable is your business? Because there's one of you. Yes. Could there be many Captain Actives? Not, you know, I know there's only one Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> there is that, there is that. But Santa Claus has a lot of helpers. He, he does. does. So Captain yeah. Active could certainly, down the track, uh, have helpers in, in different areas. You valued your business at $250,000. Yes. Uh, I'll say that slowly, that's a quarter of a million dollars. Yes. How did you arrive at that number? Yeah, yeah, no, good call. <laughs> uh, oh, and obviously... <laughs> was, that, was it one of those? I, I possibly expected that oh, to pop up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm looking at it from a perspective that it's, it's new and I see the potential. John, you've been quiet. Luke, great presentation. I don't think you have a business, to be honest. Um, I think the only chance of making this into a serious business is getting that TV show. Yes. And then yes. licensing products. Yep, I agree. If you could do those two things, I mean, look at the Wiggles. They are the mm. absolute <laughs> ideal outcome for someone like you. So I would head down that direction. Yes. But I don't think you need investors for that. So for that reason, I'm out. Good as gold. Thanks, John. Uh, Luke, ca sorry, Captain, excuse me, Captain Active. <laughs> no, good as well. Uh, I'm masks off. You are just, you know, bottled energy. It's fantastic. 
it's not something I, I, I wouldn't know how to contribute to, and, and I'm, I'm going to bow out now, mate. So good luck, and I really wish you all the best. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. No, no, I understand that. I, I think you're you're amazing. I really want one of those suits because I've been working out for a long time and I just <laughs> I can't get close to that. And you know the world is full of people who are tiptoeing through life towards death, which is really sad. You are definitely not. You're mm -hmm. a piece of work, <laughs> and uh, and I wish you a hell of a lot of luck. I don't think it's uh, in this particular business for me at the moment, so I'm out. That's fine. Yeah, no, thanks, Andrew. So, Luke? So, Naomi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love to have fun and make people happy. I do. <laughs> you do. You do. You, you get it. I actually thought, maybe this could be a red balloon experience. Yep. But you're not red, mate. You're in the wrong <laughs> colour. <laughs> so, um, at this point, I'm out. Okay, that's fine. Thanks, Naomi. <sighs> hey, Janine. I disagree with John. It is a business. It's just an early business. So for that reason, I'm out. That is as good as gold. Thanks, Janine. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Captain. I will see you later. I better yeah, mask right. back on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Go for it. Yay! Yay. 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 Watch the door. <laughs> Watch the door. <laughs> I'm exhausted. That, that, well, you didn't do the bottom <laughs> shuffle. How would you like that? I, I'm going to be bruised for weeks. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Leah, and we're from New Brisbane. And we run a very specialised childcare service. We met through our children, Ollie and Ruby, who both have special needs. Raising a child with special needs has its challenges. You just kind of learn to just go each day and take it as it comes, really. Our business is unique because there's nothing else out there at the moment like it. Life's been challenging for us, but we hope that with the expansion of our business that it will only provide opportunities not only for us, but for all the other families out there. We hope the Sharks have the foresight to see what we're trying to do to help these children and for the industry in general. And we also hope they see it as a good investment. Hi, my name's Leah. And I'm Rebecca. And we're here to introduce you to our business, Hummingbirds Early Intervention and Education Service. We are seeking an investment of $80,000 for a 20% return. At Hummingbirds, we have a childcare um, facility that offers care for children of all abilities. It was through our own journey with our children that both have a disability that led us to this very special and unique line of work. Upon sort of researching the industry for suitable care for our children, we realised there actually wasn't one single childcare facility in Brisbane for children zero to five that have a disability. As Leah has explained, both of our children do have a disability um, and as a carer, you're not only required to be their parent, you are their nurse, their doctor, their therapist, their dietitian, but most importantly, you are their advocate. At Hummingbirds, we believe that children, no matter their abilities, should be entitled and have the opportunity to play with other children. The Hummingbirds' vision is to love, appreciate and savour. That is pretty much what the Hummingbird means. So we love um, every child, no matter their ability. We actually have a little slideshow here of some of our special little people that we care for. We work on children who have gross motor development delays, so they're going to get the therapy side of support that they need, as well as the socialising. It's my little girl Ruby, big smile on her. A lot of children have trouble with focusing on tasks, so there's certain activities that they can do, but in a different setting. So if it means sitting in a clamshell to just focus on an activity, then that's what we will do for them. Our aim for Hummingbirds is to expand from our current setting, which is a family daycare, where we have a capacity of four children per day under our care, to a more centralised setting in the inner north of Brisbane, where we will care for 21 children. So that is Hummingbirds, Early Intervention and Education Service. Thank you, Leah and Rebecca. Tell us, how did you two meet? I actually met Rebecca through 
the journey with my own little boy, Ollie, which is just, he's at the top of the poster there. I originally enrolled Ollie into mainstream childcare where he did not flourish at all. He has a little walking frame, they'll complain. So I ended up um, actually withdrawing him because they were about to put him in the nursery with little babies and he's three and a half. So this led me to do some extensive searching and I found Hummingbirds, which is in Redland Bay, which is about an hour drive out of Brisbane. And Rebecca was operating on her own as a family daycare. We obviously bonded through our children and um, just discussed from day dot the lack of facility that there was and we decided to join together and yeah, in the hope to expand. That's our, yeah, that's our whole intention at the moment. I'd first like to talk a little bit about the most serious business, which is you as parents of two beautiful kids and many other Australians that have got disabilities. But, and you firsthand know the challenge that these parents are going through. I mean, could you just tell us a bit about looking after kids that have got these challenges? It's, it's um, very, very challenging, but again, it's very rewarding. You get through a day and you just see the smile and you just, like, obviously you don't want them going through pain. Ruby, until um, early last year, was on four hourly morphine and Valium in excruciating pain. She is um, considered palliative but she is getting much better, much stronger each and every day. The belief and the vision I have for, for her, as well as all children that come to care, that you see that they are there, they're just locked in their little bodies, and it's a matter of just giving them a safe space that they feel that they can come out of their shell and just really start to shine. You have long days without any support, and unfortunately, Ollie falls into a bit of a grey area where he's not disabled enough for us to get funding, and so, I've been a full-time at-home mother with him for three and a half years without any financial support. Uh, g'day, uh, Rebecca and Lee. I'm, I'm Stephen. How are you doing? Hi. Whereabouts in Redland Bay? Redland Bay, um, Dart Street in Redland Bay. Okay, up at uh, Cleveland, that's all. Oh, okay. Up the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, Rebecca, you're the major shareholder, sorry, or...? Um, no, we are joint... 50-50? Joint owned, yes. Can you walk us through the business model? This is a business pitch, and I don't want to seem callous and cold, but, um... Can you walk us through the business model of, of, of how you're actually doing the great work you're doing? Currently, um, the fees are $120 per day. Families do get the childcare benefit and rebate. So out of pocket, families would be paying about $35 per day. Is it profitable? The turnover we've forecasted at $773,000 and profit of that would be $177,000. What is the ratio of children to carers? We're looking at having two carers at all times per room, so seven children per room, two carers. How did you arrive at 23 places? 21. 21. 21, sorry. We wanted to keep it as a boutique model, and that was the minimum amount of children or spaces for an actual centre. I asked the question simply because for a facility like that, you've got fixed costs. True, true. The next model up was, I think, around 40, 45, but a lot of the children get quite overwhelmed being in big groups of people, so yeah, that was our decision. But it's a good thing helping 21 families. It's even better when you help 45 families, I think, personally, right? True. And so our next aim would be then to open a second centre once we perfect that model with another 21 children. Would you not get a facility that's relatively easier to expand? You'll get more efficiency. You've got 24% of your expenses here are to do with your non-wage expenses, effectively, right? This is a good business. This, this should happen. Is $80,000 enough to get it off the ground and going? Definitely. And you'll get cash flow to support Absolutely. it after Definitely. that? Definitely. Okay. Leah, Rebecca, you've got a waiting list of 35 people. They would spend $24,000 a year to, for four days a week to have their kids with you, right? And they are probably, by definition, getting some kind of subsidy or government support. If you've got 21 of them to give you $5,000, you've got over $100,000. I mean, in a world of crowdfunding and in a world where there is demand and where you're providing a genuine service, why don't you get your customers to fund your business? I'm not quite sure how the childcare rebate and benefits would be applicable in I that situation. I don't know either, but have you asked... We have not asked that question. In fact, it's an interesting model to investigate. And often not. it's the case, unfortunately, that a lot of families are single parent families. Through the stresses, um, myself, I, I'm the single parent of the, the two girls. I love what you're doing. I love what you're trying to do. 
If you're a not-for-profit looking for a donation, I'd probably consider it. Sure. I think your business model needs a fair bit of work and you do need some support. And I am absolutely convinced my instinct is screaming out at me that there's got to be a way of getting some upfront payment which is returned at the back end to actually take a huge drain off your cash flow. But I'm afraid at this point, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. I think what you need is someone to be right there by yourself to help take some of the business issues off your hands, get them running around filling in the applications, get them negotiating the lease so you can focus on what you're really great at. But I think you need somebody local to buddy with you and there might be people right in your business community. And it's only for that reason I, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who'd you come here wanting? You came here with Tell Us Your Story, your, your research the, the, the sharks. Really, we I... just, I think we want someone that just can see our vision, can see the need, um, and just believes in that, you know, together we can do this. Oh, I'm going to say it. I actually had a dream that you gave us an offer. <laughs> Childcare centres. I'm a tech investor. <sighs> Brisbane women Rebecca Glover and Leah James want an investment of $80,000 for a 15% stake in their special needs childcare centre, Hummingbirds. Steve Baxter is finding it hard to say no. Childcare centres. I'm a tech investor. <sighs> I was a nutritionist. <laughs> if I'm going to make an offer here, right, it's going to be with, with some conditions, right, because I do not understand the industry. Sure. I think you really want to look at a customer and advance model. You want to fund these things going forward? I, I actually love Andrew's suggestion. There's got to be a way we can actually do a prepayment system on this. We have a business plan that allows us to have more than 21 at a future stage if need be. Sure. I'm not sure whether 80K is enough, but I don't think it's materially out of the ballpark. You're doing good. You've actually got a realistic valuation if you forecast can that to be true. I'm going to make an offer here. This is too important, I think, not to, not to give a go at, OK? So I'd like to uh, go 80K for 25% for uh, as an offer, with those things I've mentioned as needing to be satisfied. Okay, so is Janine and John still in? It's, um, it's a difficult one because, a bit like Andrew, it doesn't make sense for me as an investment. And then uh, emotionally I go, oh, this is, you know, I think, I, um, you couldn't get a better partner in Steve. You know, he's, he's kind heart, he's bloody gruff sometimes, but yeah, you get used to that. Usually. And being based in Brisbane, because I know that the amount of work it's going to take for you to actually get to up there is going to be a lot. So having someone sort of close to you. So I am going to go out, um, but I cannot tell you how thrilled I am that you have actually an offer on the table for, for, from such a quality, a quality partner. Thank you. What would this mean for you? Everything for us, for... Uh, I'm just feeling a bit <laughs> emotional. I can speak for myself and, and probably Rebecca that our children have led us to our vocation and, and our career. We feel absolutely unequivocally that we will make a very good sound business out of this. We're driven with heart and passion, but we're smart women. We're very capable of this, but we have so many desperate, desperate mothers and fathers out there. It really is it. Yeah, I don't mean to get emotional because I'm I've got my business hat on also, but <clears throat> we're just, just so passionate about it and to be given the opportunity to just take, it just expands to the next level and go, okay, well, we can really amp this up and we can offer more places, as you say. Um, I do have one of my closest friends runs a number of Sydney's best childcare facilities. A friend of mine runs some of Sydney's best 
childcare facilities. This is not an investment that should be fought in the shark tank. I think uh, that doesn't feel right or make sense. Um, I'm not going to fight Steve, but if you want a partner, Them, but I'm happy for John. So you've got an offer of $80,000 for 25% and they'll share it. Deal. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Develop as a typical ch child would, and just give them, yeah, the opportunity to be in a beautiful facility. And yeah, we're just so honest. Just speechless. To, yeah, just speechless. <sighs> you have just no idea what those people go through. No, right? no I know that mm. pressure and tension every day. And those girls, they're running a business as well as having to in their own life. Yeah. yeah. I, I see old parents in the supermarkets with disabled children that they're still yeah. looking after. I think they just my like, God, what can you do? We say so, we're so lucky, but they're good women too. They need some coaching and mentoring, but they're great people. I love you too. Oh. Well done. Oh. Well done. Steve, we're in the childcare business. <laughs> hey, well done. First into the shark tank, an inventive couple with a new take on the traditional baby shower. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for having us today. I'm Hanny. This is Mireille, my wife. And uh, this is our new invention, Charlie chair. It's a baby shower chair. Today, we'll be seeking 200,000 for 5% equity in the business. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Gates had a vision to have a computer on every desk in every home. We too have a vision to have the Charlie chair in every parent's home, just to make life a little bit easier in bath time for mums and dads and, and of course, pub. On that note, I'll pass you on to Marie. Good afternoon. Um, the Charlie chair came about when I had my third child. She was quite heavy, God bless her, and I struggled with bath time. I just couldn't do it, so I used to wait for Hanny to come home so that he can bath her instead. I went out searching for a chair that could accommodate us. Obviously, it wasn't there. I came home dismayed at the idea of not having this chair. Hanny suggested that I sketch it up. And lo and behold, he decided to patent the idea. And that's why we're here. <laughs> uh, we got a mechanical engineer to draw it up properly, of course, and professionally to prepare for a prototype. Having protected the idea and the concept, I looked for local manufacturers to try to help us develop the product. Quite lucky, we succeeded with Love and Care, which is a very big uh, manufacturing organisation for baby products. They've also helped us to comply not only with Australian standards, but we've got the US standards and the European standards uh, in place as well. Two years later, here it is, Charlie Chair. Can I have a look at it? Can you show us how Please, it works? Yeah, no problem. Can I ask a silly question? Do babies like being bathed like this, or do they feel they're being strapped in and showered over and hosed down? No, well, it starts from newborn all yeah. the way up to two years of age. Yeah. My daughter, she's two and a half. We put her in and she yeah. loves it. But they don't feel restricted or...? No, not at all. I mean, if you see the child in it, no, it's actually quite comfortable. That's the range, is it? Yeah, yeah, just two, just two. It takes 17 kilos. It's very, very solid. Honey, the obvious question is around safety. Yep. yep. It's a slippery environment. Yeah. Babies are yeah. fragile, delicate. That's right. Yeah. So I'm sure you've done extensive testing because this is such a critical factor for all parents, obviously. What have you done to ensure that there's no risk that the chair could topple over or the mechanism could break? That's the reason why we don't, we don't have the chair going any further forward. If it had been any further forward, the child could topple over. But 
the height and the adjustments that we have right now is for the safety of the child. You have to have the labelling to comply with Australian standards. Um, and as Love & Care is our manufacturer, they obviously have that compliance. It's passed not only for the Australian standards, but for the European and the US standards as well. Have you got a patent or something on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. International patent as well. And we've done all the international search. There's nothing. All, all that exists is the shower chair for adults. There's nothing for newborns at all. Oh, OK. How much have you invested so far yourselves? A couple of hundred grand. <laughs> no, it's just, it's a little under 200. Yeah. I was just going to say, I mean, I see this every single day. We're selling units and houses. Space is becoming at a premium. They're going from two bathrooms to one, and often the one bathroom has a shower only. Yes. If you're in a home with just a shower, how you would have gone around this yourself? I personally have a bathtub, and I used to bend over the bathtub, and I suffered immensely. I know of parents that don't have a bathtub and they sit down on the floor and they shower the baby like that. I yep. just personally think that's extremely unhygienic, yep. um, uncomfortable for the baby, and then where are you going to put the baby when you're done? Are you business partners, equal shareholders in the business? Um, this is my wife's little baby, so she's the sole director of it. But he is <laughs> but, yeah. the backbone. Yeah. He, he yeah. does all the work. What does it cost to make and what, is, what do you sell it for? OK, Land Australia, $54. OK, and then the... Recommended? What, yep, RRP? Yep, $119.95. And wholesale? I'm 75 plus GST, so $82.50. Just to confirm, you're looking for $200,000 for 5%? Yes. Or you're valuing your company at $4 million? Yes. <sighs> so you must have sold millions of these. No, obviously not. It's only been out for a month. One month? Only one month. Our first container just arrived about a month ago. And you've sold them because clearly a $4 million valuation means that you've sold every single one and there's hundreds of people at one The more. first container's nearly finished. How many, how, many, how many did you bring in? 500. So you've sold 500. So we're talking a $4 million valuation for a business that has got only 500 products ready to sell. Can you explain where you got your valuation from? We've sold online. Um, in the past about a, month, 150. About 100. So what? So what's your profit then? So our cost is 54. Um, it cost me $10 to live Australia wide. So what's your profit though? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I know. I, I haven't worked that out. 100. Okay. <laughs> it's an important number to know. Yeah. Can I say one thing? Love and Care have been great. They actually manufacture and bring it to Australia. They pay for it. So my only cost is my time or the, the courier's time in delivery. So Love and Care does the manufacturing? They've got their factories in, in China. Right, so they ship in 500 and they give you a, an invoice of 500 no, times 54? No, no. If I, if I sell five today, I'll go and collect five and pay for five. So that's their price, the $54? That. Yes, yeah. that's correct. So I wonder how much of a margin they're making. I still can't get my head around you want... You're valuing the business at $4 million. The reason behind that is we have no competition, number one. Number two, we have a vision that it will be in every home in the near future. I want big booze one day too, but it's never going to happen. There's kind of, you know, there's kind of reality of what you can get. Yes. And there's not even an offer I could give you that would even come close to that. For that reason, I'm out. Thank you. That's fine. You're valuing this business at $4 million, which is astronomical. You have proved by standing here, you don't know your numbers, right, to be valued at $4 million. You've only made 500 You can sell each of those for $1,000, and this is still not valued at $4 million. That's it. Therefore, I'm out. Thank you for your time. I don't see it as a business, meaning that I think you could get the financial upside that you're looking for for your great idea and the great investment by effectively licensing it to probably the partner you already have or someone like that. As such, I'm out. OK. Thank you. 
I, I'm very tempted by the product. I think the market's huge. Yeah. But, you know, you haven't presented me with something that I can invest in. But that's what we need. As a business model. Yeah, we need so a mentor. I'm afraid, yeah. as I was saying, I'm afraid I'm out. OK, thank you. Right, so it's down to you, John. I'm the only one left. You're the last shark in the tank. I, I, look, I, I have... And I'm still mulling it over. I mean, I'm not Please, out yet. Yeah. But I might be half out. I like you guys, but I'm worried about your coachability. You're getting some good advice from the, from the sharks here, and yet you're kind of fighting and you're wanting... No, I'm worried about that. No, don't, don't look. If you were to come on board, you know, <laughs> you, <laughs> we, we want you to come on board. We know Honey, it's a good just product. a little bit of advice. That was the time to say thank you. I appreciate your feedback, and that would prove to us that you're coachable. It worries me that the two mums are out because these are, are mums that have been through what your product resolves, and they're smart business people. But I just can't. Stop thinking about the size of the market. This is the only solution to what I'm seeing in real estate terms and property terms, uh, an everyday problem for so many of our tenants and our buyers and our occupants of all the properties we sell. This, this could be huge. I'll give you an offer. There you go. But it's nowhere near what, where you're at. Coming up... I think it's a no, John. I think you're done. Well, we'll see. Will Honey and Murray take a bath on the Charlie chair? We've worked too hard to give up. So don't lose it now. Four sharks have turned down the chance to invest $200,000 for 5% of the baby shower chair. You're valuing this business at $4 million, which is astronomical. John is the only shark still in but will Honey and Murray accept John's valuation? I'll give you an offer. There you go. But it's nowhere near what, where you're at. I think your business is worth what you've invested in it thus far, right now. So I'm valuing your business at the $200,000 you've invested. Now, you, you might look at that and you'll say, well, you know, that seems very mean, and, but right now it's got no profits. It's, it's, a, it's a dream. I would be interested in putting in $100,000 for 50% and then lending the business an additional 100,000. Here's the reason you should take that deal. Right now you have 100% of a really interesting design and a product that has potential. With respect, you don't have the business acumen and the business experience in this area, this very competitive field, to really see the potential that this product has. I'd like to be a business partner, and I think then you can have 50% of something that could be worth millions. <clears> 50 <throat> 50% is a lot. Would you accept 20%? No, 50%. There's too much risk involved. I love the product, but I know there's a lot of work to be done. If you guys want to have a chat, that's fine. I mean, I want you to make a decision you're comfortable with. Um, and I understand it's a big difference in valuation from what you came in at, but it's where I see the business and there's no alternatives in the shark tank at the moment. So why don't you go and have a bit of a chat about it and we'll wait. Is that okay? Thank you. Fifty percent is too much. I think we'll say 40% maximum. No, he's not budging. We're not gonna go and negotiate and argue with me. I reckon it's a no. I think it's a no, John. I think you're done. Well, we'll see. I'll make some more in fact.
coming into this, we had a maximum amount of our business that we want to give away. That number was 25%. We've worked too hard to give up 50 So don't 50%. lose it now. You, you, you actually have an exceptionally capable man willing to work with you. Please, please reconsider. So what would you take lower than 50%? 50%. But at 50%, I think, you know, we can walk away, have a good deal, and we're in business today. Mm -hmm. Okay, we accept. Good! Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you. Looking forward to working with you. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank well you John. I'll see you soon. Okay. okay. See ya. <laughs> you happy? Oh, I'm delighted. Well, I think it's an amazing it's great product. product. I can see them lined up in paediatric wards. The product itself will go nuts. Yeah. Next in the tank, a Queensland couple fast tracking a perennial parenting problem. Our product is quite unique. It's going to raise a few eyebrows. And we even have a dance number lined up. Hello, Sharks. Thank you for your time today. I'm Lorn Fullwood. And I'm Tracy Fullwood. And we're the creators of PottyTraining.com.au and the Wiz and Plop brand. And we're here today to ask for $140,000 in exchange for 20% equity. Let's face it, wheeze and poos, is smelly business. But the reality <laughs> is, every child needs to be taller trained. Yet parents around Australia continue to find themselves up the proverbial creek without a paddle, struggling. Fear, confusion, tears, screaming. And then there's the children. <laughs> <laughs> My own personal experience led to the creation of the Wiz and Plot brand. I had heaps of hassles toilet training. My little girl went from complete toilet refusal screaming, to three days later, done. Racing to go every time. Pottytraining.com.au has taller trained thousands of children around Australia. No one is doing what we're doing. With 1.1 million children in childcare last year, it is a fantastic opportunity to launch a franchise system dedicated to toilet training into this ever-increasing market. With your help, we can turn wheeze and poos into a buttload of money. Mr. Poo sneaked out of a bottom one day <laughs> and found that he was alone. This is scary, said he, I don't want to see. So he slipped back into his home. <laughs> smelly, smelly, you're smelly. It's time to go. Smelly, 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 let's go. Smelly, 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 yeah. <laughs> Smelly, smelly, smelly. Let's go. Oh. Let's go, Sharks. Oh, well done. Whoa. Look at those bubbles. So before we go clean around the bend with this one, just... <laughs> you're looking for 140,000 for 20%, right? That's correct. Okay, great. What is Wiz and Plop? What is, what is... Well, I think I know what it is. Wiz and Plop is our, our go potty packs and things like that. We'll have a look. Is that all right? Yeah, so sure. those two, they're products, are they? The two up the top? This just gives you an example of, of our system. This is a, a children's book that uh, we've developed oh, great. and illustrated. And the essence of what that involves, in, we have an instructional DVD. It's a $50 product. We make 83% profit on that. That's awesome. I'd love to know what these are. <laughs> They're toilet yum yums. I thought they were edible. <laughs> Mr. Toilet <laughs> eats them, <laughs> and then you've got to try. And they're target practice, and then Mr. Toilet gobbles them up because they dissolve in the water. So you throw them in the toilet bowl, and then you target them you target with them. whatever it is you're introducing, and you can do all this at the age of 18 months. Wow! So I've, I've got a 17-month, three-week-old daughter. 
basically. So you're saying it's happened at 18 months. I'm now scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. You should be. Tell us a bit about your business and what you've actually done so far. We've just discovered, I guess, a unique way to be able to take our online store into something we believe is something we can franchise. We offer the workshops for free, and at the end of it, just like we have here, we have products on display, and they're able to come and purchase. Right. Can you tell us sales? So turnover has been 111,000, 114,000, 115,000. So, so what, what are the costs? So what, what are the profits in that? We average about 57% profit over those turnovers. Give me a quick franchise model. Sure. So have you projected what sales you're going to get? For a franchisee, it equates to a revenue of $154,000. So, Tracy, if you were doing 111,000, why do you think a franchisee can do an extra 30% more than you've been? And you're the expert. How do you think a franchisee will do better? The system's established. They don't have to try and work out a, uh, how to get into childcare centres and things like that. We've, we've worked out the spiels. But the, the numbers don't add up. No, they don't. The franchising, I, I struggle to actually sort of see how they would make the same amount of money. I've got four children and I had a fantastic system with potty training. I never, ever had one problem with them because I gave them to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Good on your mum. And um, thank you, mother. And so never had a problem. I think because the numbers for me just don't quite add up for me. For that reason, I'm out. This is not an investable business. This is a lifestyle business for you. Just focus on building, I think, a great business for yourselves. I'm out. Thank you. When I listen to your business plan, uh, it's not uh, convincing to me in terms of, you know, being able to get a return on investment. On that basis, uh, good luck, but I'm out. Thank, Thank you. you. Kids have been managing to get out of nappies for an awfully long time. Love your passion, appreciate what you've done, but I'm out. Thank, Thank you. you. I'd, I'd like to sort of, I'd like to ask something really cheeky. C can I take these with me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Certainly can. Thank you very much. Because Are you going to be an it's, advocate? It's, it's cheeky because of what I'm about to say next. I, I think that this business is a great business for you too. You, you're awesome. Your presentation was great. Love the song, right? Um, I think this is a great business, a great lifestyle business. You can make a lot of money out of that. I'm out and, and, and good luck. Thank you. Good luck with Thanks it all. Thanks very much. Good luck. Good luck. Facing the Sharks, very scary but exciting, but um, they didn't agree fully with the direction that we wanted to take the business. We're going to look into it further. It's not a business model you can invest in. No, it is actually a real problem. Tra tra no, training, is, my mother yeah. tells me. <laughs> <laughs> Next in the tank, an Adelaide entrepreneur who's got big plans for Tiny Tots. My inspiration is to promote Kakadu and its amazing art. And I wanted a unique way to showcase this around the world. Hi, Sharks. My name is Kyla Lee Bradford, owner of Piccaninny Tiny Tots. I have come here today to ask for $40,000 for 20% of my business. We produce children's clothing using authentic Aboriginal art from Kakadu. Kakadu is listed as a World Heritage Site and known worldwide for our remarkable Aboriginal art. I have racked my brain for many years for a unique way to showcase our beautiful art and traditional beliefs. Our first designs featured the Almungi, which for our region means freshwater turtle. Comes from my mother, Cheryl Kale, who is a traditional owner and a well-respected elder from this region. So with every product you purchase, you're able to take home a large part of Australian heritage and your own little piece of kakadu. Our clothing is also 100% cotton, so very gentle on your children's skin. My dream is 
to be an international brand. I mean, we have so much beauty and it is so unique. There's a niche in the market. No one's even attempted to go down the baby range with the Aboriginal art. And having my culture and heritage behind me, I would love to see it in the international market. Thank you, and I'd really love to show you some of our designs. I'd love to see yeah, it. Thank please you. Please do. My favourite colour. Oh, Orange. Excellent. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the shoes are hand painted and these are printed. Yes. I love the design. Gorgeous. It's Aboriginal, it's clever but it's a little bit um, contemporary too. Yes, my aim was to go for the brighter colours to really make our art pop. I've got an 18-month-old daughter, but I'm trying to work out what size she might be because I don't buy the clothes in the house. So... That's too small. That's too small. I think it might be too small. <laughs> That's eight months. <laughs> You'd go for a size two. You got any of them there? Um, <laughs> I will send you one straight over. Not She's a trying to sell her business, not one at a time. <laughs> Tell us about your mum. She is just a remarkable woman. My mum has brought up five children and then had foster kids my whole life. She is just unbelievable. And that is my absolute drive behind this business is to just, we've all had a hard life. And now that I've got something amazing, I'd really love to, you know, just show mum and, and bring her on this journey with me. Cause she so is, she's an inspiration for you. She's unbelievable. She is my, my inspiration. She must be very proud. Yeah. So how much of your own money have you put into the business, Kylie? Uh, so we've put in $20,000, uh, but I have no uh, debt to the business whatsoever. Um, there's no loans. I don't even have a credit card to this business. <laughs> Could we break the revenue down to a per item? What does this cost you to make? Uh, it cost me $4.80 to make, and that's landed after customs and shipping costs. Then I will wholesale them a romper and jumpsuit for 20 what will they retail them for in stores? $36.99. Good margins. Did you mention how much you've sold so far? We've sold 2,300 units so far. What does that translate into dollars? Uh, so we've made $36,800. Profit of $4,000. And you're drawing a wage from the company? By the no, sale? not at the moment. Whatever money I made, as soon as I hit my target, went in to buy the next colour range. The name? Yes. Have you had any feedback on the name at all? Uh, Piccaninny has been well known in the Northern Territory for Little One. I recoil a bit from the name. To me, it's, it's, got some, it's got some loadings that obviously you haven't experienced. Yes, OK. But my first gut reaction is, ooh, that's a, an unusual name. More Do you mean unusual or offensive or...? Potentially offensive. But if it just means little one? Well, I, 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 to me it meant, it, it meant something different. It meant, you know, it meant an indigenous little one and, and, not, and not, in a, not in a positive sense. We've never had any ne negative feedback. It's always been a name that we've used since I was little. All our family up Bush have used it. All our Aboriginal family at home still use it. They don't find it offensive. Oh, no, I understand that. I mean, I'm from the bush as well, but I do know that it could be interpreted as an ethnic slur, excuse me. OK. I love it. I think it looks good. Yeah. And I'm glad that I'm glad there's no discomfort with you with the name. Yeah, but no, to me, not at all. So maybe it's my hang-up. But uh, <laughs> So, trademark, etc. cetera, for, for picking it? Uh, not on the name, no. Can you get a trademark on the name? Have you investigated it? I'm not quite sure. Um... Because you do know, though, if you don't have the trademark and someone else does, then they can actually take your profit. So, um, mm. so it's, in, it's a really important thing. Look, I think it's fantastic. I, I mean, you've got a niche. You've got something authentic. I could see um, this being a, kind of a cool item for kids. But it's just a bit too early. From an investment point of view, sorry, I'm out. OK, thank you. Your artwork is beautiful. Um, thank obviously, you. you're from a talented family and you're very impressive. I'll yeah. definitely buy it. Yes. Well, my nieces are having babies at the moment, so I will be absolutely a customer. OK. Unfortunately for me, though, it's just a little bit too early. So for that reason, I'm out. OK, thank you. 
So, Kylie, um, I love what you're doing. As you know, it's very early stages. So it's not something for me as an investment. I'm out. Thank you. I love Aboriginal art. I have walls adorned with it. I'm a director of South Sydney Football Club, which has got a, a huge connection to the Aboriginal yes, Indigenous community, as you would know. <laughs> yes. Are you a Rabbitohs fan? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I am a Broncos fan. Oh, <laughs> oh. Well, you were sounding good there, Kylie. Yeah. No, but she doesn't lie. How does that? <laughs> I'll make an offer. On the proviso that you can talk him into being involved. I'm, I'm worried. I've got to hang up on the name. Kylie Bradford wants $40,000 for 20% of her baby clothing business. Three sharks are out, and her only hope for a deal comes with a catch. I'll make an offer on the proviso that you could talk him into being involved. I know he's been thinking about this. So here's the offer. It's $20,000 for 40%. And the other 20,000 that you require, which we need to provide, is a loan to the business to help fund its next stage of growth. So if you think that is an investment you would like, you should then talk to Mr Baxter. You know, I can actually see the global potential. I like to think about the Oshkosh brand. I just think that there's a global brand identity here that can actually be an Indigenous Australian global brand identity. So that's actually really quite cool. I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I'm worried about a few things. I've got to hang up on the name. Okay. This is not a yes or a no or anything. At this point. Should he in time. have? Kyle? I mean, should should there be? Tell me what feedback have you had? See, that's the thing because I mean, I even asked my elders, "Is this okay to use? Can we use Picaninny?" They said, "Yeah, of course. Everybody uses Picaninny in the Northern Territory, but if you have heard it, it maybe in another area and it's it's not come across." So well, I could uh, possibly understand where you're coming from. Would you contemplate changing the name if necessary, for if it if it was offensive elsewhere? Um, that's a really hard one, <laughs> really hard one, because we've, uh, yeah, that's really hard. If Steve's picked this up, and I have vaguely, but Steve's picked this up that some people find the name a slur. If that's going to be a commercial barrier to Kylie's success, she should consider it. I mean, for her own good. In the context of that terminology, John's dead right. Yeah. So, um, I don't know what to do. Um... Oh, crap. If I'm... Listen to a picture I want to invest in, I start taking notes about if I were to invest, what would I insist on? And this, these are the three things I took. Uh, royalty and licence. You are putting someone else's art under this. So there's an IP assignment that has to occur. Yeah. It's in the family at the moment. That's fantastic. Yeah. We all know that families don't sometimes some, some stay friendly, all right? Yeah, so okay. um, we just need to protect ourselves there. The name, I'd take it at face value that you'd be willing to change it was commercially damaging the success of the company. So that's fine. I can get over that. And the we need the trademark. The trademark has otherwise. to happen. And the trademark has to happen as well. If it can't be trademarked, we probably should be looking to change the name anyway. So I, I see a lot of possibilities for this. You know, and I came here wanting to do tech investments of straight equity. <laughs> now I'm going to get into children's clothing. You have a child. I do have a child, but that's not the same thing. Right? <laughs> Steve, you've heard my offer. I, I, I could do that offer. So then it would be two sharks, 40%, mm -hmm. and you would have a $20,000 loan to draw down on to grow the business as well as injecting the $20,000 in capital. So you need to think about that, because it's got to feel right for you. I'll just take a moment. <laughs> just okay. relax. Take just... your time. Okay. 
I would love, love to take your offer. Hey. <laughs> so excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really excited. Backstrom, how are doing a few deals here, aren't we? <laughs> Where's your mum? She around? She'll be so proud. Oh, no. Love you so much. Oh, Thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you're very proud. <laughs> she deserves everything. She's such a hard little worker. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. You're in business. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you too. Thank you. Oh, look at that baby. Oh, Kylie. We done it, eh, baby? <laughs> Oh, little people amazing. from the bush. <laughs> <laughs> You've made a very sensible investment, and I'm absolutely sure your investment will be secure. The key question is how to get it to the next, next level. level. That is selling, will sell. Every tourist shop I've ever seen walking Correct. through malls, I'm just thinking it's got to be in there. Oh, totally. It's got to be in there. So. Correct. Next into the tank, two concerned mums cooking up a plan to create a generation of young chefs. Hi, I'm Joanne Boskell. And I'm Holly Bowl. And together we own 100% of Get Kids Cooking. Today we are seeking $150,000 investment for a 10% share of our company. In Australia, almost two out of three adults are overweight or obese. And that statistic now in children is one in four, almost a quarter. Research has shown that one of the top ways to combat this in Australian children is to teach them food education in primary schools. So Holly and I have delivered 550 hands-on cooking classes for more than 15,000 primary school students. Then we met with the Department of Education, the Department of Health, and we developed a curriculum linked cooking program that is fun, cost-effective and scalable and tailored to Australian primary schools, teachers and students. So in Australia, there are more than two million primary school aged children in over six and a half thousand primary schools. And initially, we're targeting 10% of that market. So let's show you a little bit about what Kick Kids Cooking at School is. It's made up of a few components. The first one is called the kitchen cart. The kitchen cart is a fully portable, commercial grade kitchen. It can be wheeled out into anywhere in a school. It has a commercial oven for speedy baking times, an induction cooktop for safety, and even includes the kitchen sink. Another component of Get Kids Cooking at School is Cook in a Box. These are modules, a bit like a subscription, and we send these out to schools and they have in them everything that is required for a teacher to run a cooking class. We have packaged this together for a school to be able to buy this over a period of time. So a school with an average of 400 students would purchase this over a five-year period and the cost for that would be $85 per student per year. And based on 10% of the market in Australia, that equates to a revenue per annum of $22 million. Well done, Joanne Holly. That's 150,000 for 10%. So you're valuing your business at 1.5 million. Correct. Pretty uh, significant valuation. G'day, Holly and Joanne. I'm Steve. How are you doing? Where, whereabouts are you from? What state? Yeah, we're based here in New South Wales. New South Wales, okay. Sydney's northern beaches. How do you measure the business? And we'll, 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 we'll dig down from there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. What we're looking to deliver in this next financial year is around 450 to $500,000. And we've done a plan out um, for the next five years as well. So that grows from half a million to one million. And then it grows to five million. And then 10 and then the 22. So to get to your wonderful 22 million, it's a big number, I like it. Um, that's 650 schools roughly, Correct, which yes. is your 10% of 6,500 mm -hmm. schools. You're a very impressive pair. You, I mean, frankly, I'm sitting here thinking, how could I help you? You could seem to have it all nailed. <laughs> Thank you. The only thing I'm struggling with is your valuation. 1.5 million, how did you come about that? Mm -hmm. So we did do a little bit of research into valuing the business and we were advised to take a conservative look at what we've done to date, um, the orders that we have and the inquiries that we have and make a projection from there. I think your valuation's 
up for negotiation. I'll be that polite, otherwise you'd call it nuts. Um, but I really like what you do. And I'll see what the other sharks are going to do. When it comes to an investment, I look at how can I make that investment amplify through what I know, who I know, and what I can contribute. And I don't particularly know the education network except my own experience. I think you're really great, but I'm out. Perfect. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks for your consideration. I've got to say, you know, my second oldest son just left school this year and he can barely boil an egg, let alone pasta. Yeah. I find the education department not teaching the kids basic things like budgeting and cooking, just things that they need. So I love your model. I was sitting here trying to work out if I could do a deal and how I could do a deal. And when I do the numbers, the only way I could do a deal would be too big of taking a portion of your equity. Yeah, he said it was nuts. It probably is the evaluation of where you are right now because you're not allowing for execution risk. Mm -hmm. So, um, unfortunately, I'm out due to the valuation. But good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Look, I love what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, you tick the boxes. Education, food, which is important to all of us, health. I can see how you'll be influencing diets of kids. It's great. As an investor, I look at it and I just wonder what value I can add. It's, you know, I, I think I hate being dumb money, if you understand the expression, and I think all I'd be is dumb money. <laughs> so for those reasons, I'm out. Steve. I'll stop being so gutless, I'll make you an offer. Um, but it is, it's going to highlight exactly what Janine said. So I'll give you the, uh, the 150,000 bucks for, um, you probably went to wish you had a chair, 40%. I, I do like this. I want to see something happen out of it. I want to see an offer out there at least. Um, and I'm not trying to, although I'm sure I'll get reminded of this later on, I'm, I'm not trying to bottom feed. I'm not, but I truly think the stage you're at, this is, this is an appropriate way to get, a, to get a risk discount into what you're asking for. Playing in a glass house here, mate. I am in a hell of a That is I'm so glass house. Unquote. I just quote unquote, I'm not trying to bottom. But I am, yeah, however. <laughs> on that thought, it is a bottom feed. Glenn, would you like to have a go? Oh, I'd love to, Andrew. The, look, um, I love what you're doing because it's socially important as well as you're actually working out how to make some money out of it as well, which is not a bad thing. It's okay that you actually do your passion and you make some money out of it. Uh, my offer, straight up, I'm, I'm in. 150k for 30%. What you get is someone who understands the education side quite well, but also someone who shares your passionate belief and want absolutely to support and share your journey. In the blue corner, we have Steve at $150,000, 40%. And in the red corner, we have Glenn, 150,000 at 30%. Guys, you're welcome to countering. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm fully priced at 40 at 40 percent. Thank you. I think we'd like to make a counter offer for 20 percent. Gee, you're tough. <laughs> you wouldn't want to partner with anyone who wasn't. <laughs> so 20 percent. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is it going to be, Glenn? <laughs> you got you got these ladies' lives in your hands. So that values it at, at uh, basically a five times next year earnings on the hope that you guys will deliver. It's when, we deliver. when we deliver. When we deliver. When we deliver. When you deliver. Uh, when you deliver. We're ready to go. <laughs> Where's the coin? Oh. <laughs> I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. Thank well you. Done. Thank you very much. Well Thank done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank well you. Done. Thank you. Wow, well, we're going to have healthier kids next year. That's good. They are pretty impressive, though. Oh, they were amazing. Yeah, they were, they were impressive.
even got the shark wanted. Very happy. Just means that we can now truly scale this business and get it out to kids everywhere. They're the ones who, who need that skill for life. First into the tank, an entrepreneur ready to open the door on a magical idea. I'm Sally. I'm from the beautiful Southern Highlands of New South Wales. The idea for my product came from my two beautiful daughters. <laughs> I was researching ideas for their birthday and I stumbled across this concept that I knew would help families. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? This how are looks you? fantastic. My dream is to see my product in every store, in every house, for it to be a household brand. Talking to the sharks about my product is going to be absolutely once in a lifetime. And I think they're going to love it. Hi, I'm Sally, and I'm the founder and fairy in charge at Little Fairy Door. I'm asking for $325,000 for 20% of my company. A fairy door is a tiny little door that you put down low on a wall or up high on a shelf, and the fairies come in and out at night and leave little notes and presents for well-behaved children. The idea for Little Fairy Door came from my fairy crazy daughter. With my background in graphic design and web design, I had seven months of secret fairy business and within a week of launching the brand, I had sold out. Wow. It's been a pretty amazing journey. We are running into our fifth year with over a thousand stores stocking the Little Fairy Door brand. And we'd love some help from a shark or two to help spread this fairy magic as far and wide as possible. Sally, how, how does it work? Well, it's a tiny little door with mailboxes and mushrooms, and fairy footprints leading outside the fairy door. We also have some fairy notes. Oh, in here. I was getting emails from families who are having all these amazing results. Families whose children are now sleeping in their own beds at night. They're toilet training. They're cleaning up their rooms because the fairies reward them for good behaviour. <laughs> now, Sally, I have to tell you, I'm a customer. Unreal! I bought this for nieces and lots of little ones. But tell us about your sales, because if you're in a 1,000 stockists, that means you must have some serious sales behind the business. We've got 300 new stockists in the last 45 days. Oh, wow. Last year, we did 700,000. Yeah. Since the start of this financial year, we've done 868 so far. We're set to do 5.1 million. Because of the interest that we've had from the US, the market is pretty incredible over there. Wow. On $5.1 million, what do you expect to make? We're looking to make 900. And that is in US. I'm in. I'll give you exactly what you're after. 325 grand, 20%. No, he's a, he's, he's <laughs> been a Queenslander, he's rushing I want to look at who's the appropriate partner for this. Your projected sales, 5.1 million, 900,000 profit for the next financial year. Right. That's why he's getting so excited. So you just got to calm him down a little bit. Well, I'm actually making the offers. They're just talking and gas bagging. So, you know, we can, we can do the deal if you really want, or you can just continue to do this, so. You, you want a partner who deeply wants to work with you and understand you? Correct. I need some sharks to help me make this the household brand that it's so close to being. That's why I bring a team to I actually got a team of people that actually help. I have an operations manager and I have uh, finance and accounting staff. Yeah. So we put resources in there to actually assist our businesses. So we can move on with this or we can, you know, keep with the banter. This is from a guy who has absolutely no fairy experience. <laughs> we don't know that. He's keen. He's keen. Imagine what you do if you sprinkle some fairy dust. Exactly. Where do you live? I didn't even ask that, did I? Look at that. I didn't even ask where she was from. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got fairy dust in your eyes, Steve. 
We're about an hour and a half south of Sydney, so we're in the Southern Highlands. Right. OK, well, we've got one shark in for deliberating. I think we should get on with the feeding frenzy, but don't worry, we don't eat fairies. It's OK. Please don't You're eat safe. my fairies. You're safe. <laughs> They're very special fairies. The fairies actually come with us to our hospital visits. Oh, nice. These kids are going through really terrible things. So we go and we hand out hundreds of fairy doors once or twice a year. And they're for those moments when they wake up in the morning and check if the fairies have visited, they're not sick. I'll be in for that too if you need a hand. That's all right, regardless what happens. So, Sally, I'm going to make you an offer. Okay. I'm going to offer you the 325 for the 20%. But I think more than that, I am literally just around the corner and I think you're going to need some hand-holding and I'd love to be that person for you. Thank you so much. Two in, three to go. <laughs> oh, I'm in. I'll, I'll just quite happily match Naomi. Yeah, I'll make you an offer. I'll match the offer, 325 and 20%. I think you've got this kind of on a roll, but I think I can help move things along in the US. Thank you. Look, I'm with the rest of the group. 325 for, for 20%. So if you sell 20% to all of us, you walk away with $1.625 <laughs> million and you work for us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that isn't fairy dust, what is? Look, I, I'm i honoured. I know that all of you could help. I'd love to have the business meetings and have all of you involved. So I'd love to get more than one shark together on a team. Would any of you be interested in banding together? How much are you prepared to sell? Would you sell more than 20%? There would be something that I'm definitely open to. All right. It will become quite a logistics business. It's about having the right stock in the right place at the right time. Absolutely. And that level of logistics experience is going to be really important for you. Absolutely. You need sharks that are used to high-growth businesses. Yeah. If I was to make a suggestion, knowing how he manages stock and has in all of those things in the logistics, I would love to work with Glenn on this deal. You do 10% each? Correct. At half of 325. Yep. Plus a $325,000 loan if you need it for working capital. So that's in total $650,000. Now, while you're contemplating that mediocre deal, <laughs> over here, I'd like to introduce you to Janine, who has a proposal. Um, us three at this end, we'd like to make an offer of $486,000 for 30%, okay? So we will take 10% each. Now, what you get, though, is you get a very wide pool of experience and you get three sharks. And the better looking end, I think. Yeah, well, you know, Andrew's, Andrew's correct there. <laughs> so are you offering up a $460,000 loan as well? No. So they're just putting 462, we're at 325, plus another 325 as a loan in total. $650,000. Just so you know with the loan, though, I don't know what their loan is. I don't know what percentage it is. That could be a negative, not a positive. Right. So, yeah, sure, we'll put it up as well. Sally, she's very persuasive, <laughs> but just listen to the detail. And can I mention that we'll have great board meetings. You don't want great board meetings. You want constructive board meetings. You want board meetings where people are actually going to give you value. <laughs> Don't give away too much because Don't you are on a roll. Much. And if you would like my contacts in America, which are deep in retail, right. uh, happy to open the doors to give you a hand on that front too. OK, Sally, it's time to decide. Put us out of our misery. All five sharks are willing to spend big money for a piece of Sally Copas's business, Little Fairy Door. Would any of you be interested in banding together? 
Glenn and Naomi have made an offer for 20% of the company. You do 10% each? Correct. While Steve, Andrew and Janine are asking for 30%. We'd like to make an offer of $486,000 for 30%. OK. OK, Sally, it's time, time to decide. Put us out of our misery. Look, to me, it's, it's a huge decision. All of you have that business mind to help me with these strategic decisions. Naomi and Glenn, I'd like to take your deal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> may, may the fairies always be on your side. Thank you. Well, well done. done. Congratulations. What a great job. Well done. Well done. Sally, well done. It's Thank fantastic. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Really all the best, mate. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Mary. Bye. Hey, winner, winner. Just saying. Sometimes <laughs> the fairies get it wrong. I don't know what was in your fairy dust, but you had them all hook, line and sinker. I can't believe I got all five sharks. Tough decision to make, though. I think that we definitely made the right choice. They're going to be a huge part of how we take Fairy Door to the world. First into the tank is an entrepreneur with a motivational spirit. I think life's about being involved, about doing things, about being contributors, about finding our own paths and doing the darn best we can. I'm Kim, I'm 61, I live in beautiful downtown Dubbo in New South Wales. I'm passionate about martial arts, push, push it, that's it. teaching, and I love music, I love writing, singing. Go from the top, mate, thank you. OK, stand by. Yo! Come on, everybody, listen up good. What are we doing today? We're going down a hill pond. Whoops, got that one wrong. Mate, would you just run that one again, please? I got the words wrong. My product combines my love of music, fitness, martial arts, teaching, and it works. I love doing what I'm doing because I love helping people to find their best them. Oh, small children, beware. Awesome. B, do you want to help give out those sticks, please? Whoops. And let's do the icky dance. Icky says row. Ready? Heave. Heave. Icky says motorbike. Let's go around the corner. Round the corner. Round the bend. Icky says trumpet. Doot. 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 Icky says guitar. Let's go. Get into it. <laughs> yeah, let's do that icky dance. Warrior. You guys were awesome, thank you. Safe, respectful learners. Well done. Welcome. Yeah, you're well, well done. Welcome. Great guys. job, guys. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming to Shark Tank. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. G'day Sharks, my name's Kim. I'm the creator and the director of Icky Fit Safe, Respectful Learners. Today I'm asking for $250,000 for 10% of the business. Icky, as you saw, engages students in learning, but it also gives a simple, effective behaviour management process that is effective in all learning environments. Excuse me. The money, we want the money to build an app and to start training new trainers to take that to the world. We have an accredited training program, so we train the teachers to present the program like that in a classroom using 
an interactive board. So all of the programs, these are deliverable straight to the classroom via this or, or some sort of a smart device. I've been working on this program for 14 years, actually a lot longer than that, but 14 years under this brand, and it's now ready to go to the world. So, Kim, you are looking for $250,000 for 10%, so you're valuing this business at $2.5 million? Correct, Andrew, yes. Right. Oh, I'm confused. I don't know what it is. <laughs> what problem are you trying to solve? <laughs> Great question, Janine. Two problems. Number one, a lot of kids these days aren't that engaged in activity. They're using, they're using devices all the time. They're no longer doing all of these movements that our ancestors and even ourselves grew up with, chopping, rowing, kayaking, surfing. So those fundamental movement skills, this teaches those children very quickly. What age range are we talking about? 18 months to 18 years. 18 months? So the problem you're trying to solve is you're saying that children now are, are, are losing some certain motor skills. Correct. And your program helps to fill that void? It does, Janine, and also it actually engages them in any learning. So we do find that a lot of the kids really get this. But the rules are really important too because it's about a process to set up what we call a safe, respectful learning environment. Currently, a lot What does of... that mean? Sorry, what does that even mean? For a long, long time, lots of education institutions from tiny... from preschools and all-day care centres to schools haven't had clear rules, haven't had clear processes to, to manage behaviour. Sorry, go back, I'm confused. Yeah. So every school has programs of how to manage behaviour? Yeah, but they're, they're not consistent and they're not simple and they're not easily apply, applicable. That's they're because not... every child's different. Yes, they are, but they're not too, Janine. We want all children, do we not, to be able to function socially. We want them to be able to learn simple rules so that they can cross the road and eventually get a car. Every context in our life has rules. It has expected behaviours. So, 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 Kim, seriously, I, I feel subtly uncomfortable, but I'm not yeah. sure why. What, what are your qualifications and background that give you the ability or the right to, to evolve a system like this? Glenn, I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher by trade, so I've been yep. a teacher, qualified teacher for a long, long time. Yep. Uh, fitness instructor, martial arts instructor, etc. Et I can see the martial arts there. That's what I was going. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, a fairly experienced long-term martial arts teacher. Yep. Yeah. That, that felt really awkward. Everyone, everyone needs to understand that there are rules, but, 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 but literally, you know, uh, it, it felt, it felt confining. It felt uncomfortable. I was really disturbed by it. Steve, I can understand that, and some people do react that way, a small percentage. Honestly, I, I can't worry about that. I have done it many thousands of times, and so, 99.9... So, Kim, here's the thing. You've come here asking for money for us, so our opinion counts. Of course it does. It really counts right now. OK, I, I, can, I can be convinced of anything if, if it's working in business. So. Tell us the business. OK, so we have 16 early childhood centres engaged. And what are they paying? Uh, a, average about $2,000 a year. So $2,000 per annum. So you've got about $32,000 a year in revenue, is that it? That's all. That's, That's it. Correct. And you get a $2.5 million valuation. Correct. Sixteen up to early childhood centres. That's thirty-two thousand dollars a year. Is your current income? No, we have other schools. So there are there are six primary schools. There are six uh, central schools. So some of the income from some schools is a lot different. Can I just coach you for a minute? You have two tenths of no chance of getting an investment here today, unless you can tell us numbers. Absolutely. We don't, have a, we don't have a big business at the moment at all. We don't have a good business. Just, at the just tell us the numbers. We know yeah. what startup the world numbers, is like. We, we, we believe that we can train up to 1,700. No, no, come on. No, no. What no, no, are you on, doing focus. in revenue and costs right now? Yeah, uh, 50,000 in the last year. Yeah. How much have you invested in this, Kim? 800,000. Oh, 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 Lord. Kim.
Tom's pitch for his kids' fitness and learning program has left the Sharks cold. Seriously, I, I feel subtly uncomfortable, but I'm not sure why. I don't know what it is. And it went from bad to worse when the Sharks dug a little deeper. How much have you invested in this, Kim? 800,000. Oh, 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 Lord. Kim. Hey, I'm happy. Oh, yeah, easy. how? How are you happy with that? Well, it's... Have you been making a living out of this for the last 10 or 15 years? Is that where you get your 800,000? No, I actually out? haven't, Andrew, but it's... The reason I'm happy is because I know that there's a huge demand for it out I'm there. I'm so glad you're happy because that's an amazing amount of money for something that's got absolutely no traction and probably no prospect of traction. Mate, how did you... Why did you spend $800,000 on Developing the video, learning, creating the music, uh, learning... But aren't the numbers telling you, despite your challenges, that this isn't going to make your $800,000 back? Janine, on one level, yes, but look, I'm honestly confident that it's going to work. Kim, um, mate, seriously, you've, you've put a value of $2.5 on your business. And I can tell you straight up, mate, I absolutely applaud people that have a go, but in this case, you are seriously having a go at my business sensibilities, and unfortunately, I'm out. Cool. There's no question that discipline and structure is really important for young children to do. And having four kids, you know, they need that. But I honestly would take my child out of a school that had to do that every morning. I must admit, I'm probably with the boys. I felt a bit uncomfortable watching it. So I'm out. That's fine, Janine. Thank you. If you have spent $800,000, I'd say please take a good, hard look at that. Understand where it's going. You, you, you need at some point to recoup, or recoup, recoup some money out of this. I wish you all the best. I don't believe in it. I'm out. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. I, I, um, I'm a saddened. I thought you would have been a great partner, but I, I respect what you say. So three sharks are out, two are in. You still in, Naomi? There is the saying that no one is more deaf than the man who chooses not to listen. So I think I'd really struggle to work with you I have no idea how you came up with your valuation. So, for that reason, I'm out. If you'd put a chart up there that said, when kids go through my programs, here are the measured outcomes and I can prove it, if you could have done something like that, I could have got interested. Mm. But that, the lack of the valuation, uh, I'm afraid, you know, good luck to you. I'm sure you're making a difference to some kids' lives, but I can't be an investor. I'm out. Thank you. Good luck to Good you. Good advice mate. too, Andrew. Thanks. Good advice, everybody. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks See you, for mate. coming. Take Thank care. Thank you very much. See you, See you later. Yeah. Thank you. Can I say how? How are you feeling? No, I'm feeling fine. Janine said that she was worried that maybe this idea isn't ever going to work. Do you agree with her there? Absolutely disagree. This works. I know it's going to work. Honestly, if if he spent eight hundred thousand yeah. dollars and has made. $50,000 or $30,000, whatever he made, I hope he gives up today. Next into the tank, a mother and daughter duo who are hoping to turn their lounge room business into a global empire. I'm just a mum who had a great idea given to me by my daughter, and that's why I'm here today. I don't have a lot of business knowledge, so getting the sharks help in this is priority for my business. My name is Lily. And my name is Lauren, and I am the owner and creator of Wish You Were Here Dolls. I'm asking for $25,000 for 20% equity. One night five years ago, when my daughter Lily was four, she came out to me while I was sewing away on my machine. She said that she missed Daddy so much. You see, my husband had recently started FIFO work in WA. He was gone for four weeks at a time and only back for one and she was finding this really hard. So she looked up to me and said, can you please make a doll that looks like Daddy so I can cuddle him at night and feel safe? So I sat down to do some research and the very next day, the very first Wish You Were Here doll was born. This is Pull My Daddy. I cuddle him at night and take him places during the day. 
My wish you would hear all of Daddy makes me safe and it's like he's always with me. A wish you were here doll is a doll shaped pillow with a picture printed on the front of the person you wish most was here. I had no idea the massive reaction I would get to my dolls. Everyone wanted one. Not only was I making dolls for parents that worked away, but for FIFO, Defence Forces, grandparents that lived far away, and a large number now for people who have passed. So I would love you sharks to help me help more children, not only in Australia, but all around the world. So sharks, will you help us? OK, well done. That's a great presentation. So Lily and Lauren, 25,000 for 20%. And uh, just to confirm, FIFO, fly in, fly, fly out. In, fly so out. you're yes. talking about people who go away like Daddy did for four weeks at a time to a mine site or to an oil well or something like That's that. That's right, yeah. yeah. Can I have a look at Can them? Can we have a look well, at them, yeah. Well, I think, Lily, you should go and hand out those now. OK. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> How many dolls have you made, Lauren? 3,000 so far. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of sewing. They're all handmade, yeah. They're all, every single one's handmade. you sewed $3,000? Yes. Oh wow. <laughs> so how does it work? Someone sort of, you sell them through online or where, and, and how do you get the photo? I just have a Facebook page. Thank you, Lily. And I have a little website. And what they do is they order on the website and then they send me their photo through email. Yep. How oh, fabulous, Lauren. <laughs> Lily, thank you very much. Thank you, Lily. So now you can cuddle yourself. Oh. Oh. That's great. Would you like mine to cuddle? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I really admire what you've done and congratulations for seeing it a problem and coming up with a really good idea. Mm. Thank you. So I guess, Lauren, we better get into some harsh facts. Sure. Tell us about what it costs and what you retail them at, and how long it takes to make them too. Okay, well, at the moment, three weeks, and I retail them for $39. Once you work out all your costs in terms of labour, getting it printed, all those things, what are the real costs? $12 per doll. And there's scope to make that much, much cheaper. So so literally, the $27 is what you put in your back pocket at the end of yeah. the day? Yeah, that's right. Wow, that's even better. Yeah. What are your total sales to date? Uh, 197,000. And how many sales have you had just this year, this financial year? Uh, 85,000. What is your profit? 50. That's a nice little business that you've it's got a at home. It is, yeah. Isn't it? In the US, the Defence Forces and the, the amount of uh, service people just in that sector in the US connecting is huge. That's right. Is there any way of scaling it? Is there any way of protecting this? Do you have any kind of. I do of... have a patent. You have a patent design. on this? Yes, I have a patent for my design in Australia and um, pending for um, America and Europe. I'm sorry, what, what did you get as a patent? Um, I've got an innovative patent for that and also um, a design patent. What did you patent? Um, the process and the look. Really? The process of putting a photograph yep. on a, what, cushion? Cushion, or yeah. On a cushion. Yep. And, wow. the, and also the shape is my design patent. I was expecting to hate this. I'm thinking, oh, this <laughs> looks terrible. Dolls, people staring at me here. But then you <laughs> saw mine, Steve. <laughs> what do you see for your future? Do you want to run a large enterprise or would you like to license this to somebody else and take a royalty as you go through? Um, I, it'd be something that I'd have to think about for the future, especially with my family. This does take up, up a lot of my time but I need um, business people to help me get it where I want to get it. When, when I hear you talk, I think what you're looking for is a partner, not an investor. You kind of need someone beside you packing boxes and buy the machine, and, and mm. so that's not quite an investment for me right now. I'm out. Thank you so much. So, Lauren, um, it's not an investment for me, but I really wish you luck. I'm out. Thank you very much. So, Lauren and Lily, I love what you've done, because I, I get it. It's a support for a little person that, that's missing their dad or mum, uh, but I'm not going to be any help at all for this business, so I'm out. Thank you very much. Lily, Lauren, I'll give you $25,000 for 40% of your business, subject to one thing, the defensibility of the US patent. 
and I'll be your friend in the US market. Thank you. OK. Go on, Steve. Now, look, I've, uh, I was uh, armed services for almost nine years, so uh, these dolls will take some pretty special meaning. I'm going to match Andy's deal. 25,000 bucks for 40%. OK. Do you need to go and chat to the family quickly, or...? If we can go chat, that'd be great. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Get your hands off. <laughs> Watch it. Hello. You're kissing me. I've got two offers. Um, so it's really just picking um, the right shark. Yeah. No, whatever you think. Yeah. OK. It's your, your gig, so... OK. No, we'll support you. So we're we ready to go? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hello. Here we are. So Lauren introduces to the family. Uh, this is my husband, Paul. G'day, how you going? Good, how are you doing? Good, thanks. This is my little bloke, Bowie. Hey. Hi, buddy. And this is Andy, and she's five. Oh, Hi, well, Andy. how are you? Good. Is it good to be here? Mm-hmm. It's my first ever time here. <laughs> All right, so you had an offer from me for $25,000 for 40%, and Steve's matched that offer. So um, I'm focused more on the US market. Obviously, Steve's based here. What did you decide? We pick Andrew. Oh! <laughs> Lily, I knew you and I were destined to work <laughs> together. Hey, good to meet you. Thank you Great. so much. Great. Yep. Well done. Thank you. Great idea. I think we're going to get this out yeah. there. Yeah, good to meet you. you. you too. Hey, buddy. Thank you so much, everyone. Congratulations. Thank Bye. You. Congratulations. Bye. Really we're exciting. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye. Bye, Bye Andy. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> well, let's hope the US patent stacks up. If yeah, it does, right. I think yeah, we're yeah. on our way. Photographers Brendan and Sandra have come up with a product that they are incredibly proud of. Our product is something that we could not believe had not been invented before. But at first glance, it has the sharks confused. Oh, my Lord, what oh is my this? God. Oh, that's a bit creepy. What is it? Actually, why is it? I wonder how much these people have spent on their business. Don't you think it's a bit creepy? I'm out first. I'm really hoping that the sharks love our product as much as we do. It's a world first, and we're just hoping that a shark comes on board so we can bring this to life. Hi, sharks. My name is Brendan, and this is my wife, Sandra. And we are the co-founders of Stand In Baby. Today, we are seeking a $200,000 investment for a 20% stake in our company. Stand In Baby is a one-of-a-kind newborn training mannequin of realistic size, weight and movement, designed to be a safer, more efficient solution to infant training. Sharks, as you know, there is heaps of mannequins available, but surprisingly, there was none that functioned and articulated like a real baby, none that required you to support the head or allowed you to practise realistic handling and positioning of a newborn. Born from the necessity to safely train staff in our newborn photography studio, we undertook two years of R&D, utilised crowdfunding, and with our own success within the newborn photography industry, we foresee rapid growth for Stand In Baby both here and worldwide. So, Sharks, who wants to make babies with us? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, you're photographers. Our background is photography. And the thing with newborn photography is you can't just pick up a baby and give it a crack. You need to know what you're doing. You need crack. to know how you're going to position them, how you're going to light them, and how to achieve the poses that you see. Uh, Brendan and Sandra, I'm Steve. How are you doing? Hi, Steve. Good, thanks, um, Assuming I've got some recent experience with this. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it meant to be this flexible? It's made to be a limp feel. So say, for example, with the head, when you're supporting the head there, Steve, if you turn it far enough, it stops where a baby's head would stop, yet it still remains limp the whole time. Creating moulds and creating this product mm -hmm. wouldn't be cheap. Can you tell me how much you put into the business? We personally put in $220,000 of our own money, but we've actually returned that as of July last year. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? Yes, yeah. we're in profit. So we're actually in profit. Wow. 
What, what made you think there was a market for this? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I look at this and think... Who bought it? Yeah, New photographers. photographers. That's we'll... our market. <laughs> when you're taking a photo of a baby, you need to take several photos of babies. That means you have to move them. What we had to do was learn how to move and reposition babies to get the optimal amount of photos that we could. But there's not that many photographers that take pictures of babies. How do they Actually, all find no, a no, no, it is second to wedding photography. Is that right? Yeah. It yeah. is it's the biggest big growing industry. field. So end June 30, 2016, uh -huh. what, was your, what was your rev? Can we just do that quickly? Because I'm still blown away this is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's good with the numbers? Brendan. Me. Uh, the gross was uh, $10,000 and the net was uh, a loss of $125,000. Hang on, you're getting the terminology wrong. I'm just wanting top line Revenue, sales. sales. The sales. income into the company. Including tax and non -including tax. Okay, let's no. stop again. Yeah. In financial year 2016, mm -hmm. what were your total sales? How many? How yeah, much that, did you that's, invoice? That's what we're saying. That's what it was. Ten that, how many? Ten thousand well, oh, okay. dollars? Sorry, I, I've got it now. <laughs> right, okay, let's start again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, it was eight hundred and ten thousand dollars in total over the last two years, and I know within that within that year um, we had because all of the tooling and all of the so major Can we go back to the question? Yeah. What is your revenue that the sales you've made, the most you know one of the, the second year. most important thing you In care about? In the 2016? Yep. Our uh, three hundred and ten thousand. And that was minus yep. one twenty five? Net? Was it that year? Yeah, well, it was a... Uh, um, That's fine. No, no, I don't have excuses. Just to be honest. <laughs> no, right. no, we just want, so what was the sales revenue in 2017? It was it was actually a bit less, but only no, because... No, 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 number, number. The number was... We, we need this, mate. If you can't answer this, you're, you're, you're more trouble than Ned Kelly, right? Brendan and Sandra have invented the world's first articulated newborn training mannequin. What were your total sales? The sharks are intrigued, but Brendan is struggling to remember his numbers. We, we need this, mate. If you can't answer this, you're, you're, you're more trouble than Ned Kelly, right? The number was... I'm not too sure. All right, and so this year, yeah. what yeah. are you expecting it to be? Gross revenue yep. um, around five hundred thousand dollars. That's not okay. That, that's, so gross revenue is five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. How many of these things so far you've sold? Thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred. So mm -hmm. how many more do you think you can sell to the photography market? There's, there's actually a couple of problems that I've got at the moment. Okay. H how many more do you think you can sell? You, you, we have really projected you're really profits. Really hard to pull of, an answer out of you. Aren't you? Sorry. It's so hard to pull answers out. Of. We have projected of 1.2 for 2000. For the and, photography market. Yes. So that's in dollars. How many units do you think you can sell? I think we're probably around the 10 percent at the moment of people who could use them. And you're the numbers guy. Yeah. Man, you, are, <laughs> you, you, you have to get better answers. How many? I, have I, you... I, I hate to think if you got any close to a customer, you'd scare the daylights out of them. Excuse me. How many have you sold into the US? Uh, I would say it would be about an eighth of all of our product that goes into. You would say. You need some help in your business to help you manage your own numbers. I mean, you should know, given this is your baby, mm -hmm. where every one of these has we been do. sold. You do. We well, do know. In a normal boardroom, <laughs> I would have my figures. We just don't have them here today. Yeah. We'll put it down to nerves then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely nerves. You, this is clearly your baby. And yet we're all really struggling to get that confidence in you as entrepreneurs. Yeah. So you come across as very clever people who kind of not get the answers yeah. to us. So congratulations Thank on you. your business. Thank it's you. not an investment for me. So Appreciate I'm it. out. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. So have you had feedback from the medical sector at all? Yes, we have. Yep. They are literally loving, loving it. it. In the last couple of weeks, we have employed a medical device uh, sales rep, and she's it's getting it's a lot of good feedback. We've already sold 13 because it's great for medical imaging, it's great for any sort of training where you need to have practice at it prior to jumping in with a real baby. Emergency services, a bunch of things. There's a, there's a heap, yeah. Are, are they willing to pay? Because it's really hard to get cash They actually told guys. us it was too cheap. 
I'll oh, put really? the price up then. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the 13 that you've sold into the medical world, is that hospitals, physiotherapy clinics, what is it? 10 of those 13 are going to the one hospital for their um, antenatal class. That's, that's how it's going to sell, right? The part that I got excited about was she's been on three weeks. She's already sold 10 to one antenatal class. How many antenatal classes are happening? We have in, in Australia. Wide, US wide. Yeah, in Australia we have uh, 1,300 hospitals and around 400 would have maternity within Australia. And are you saying that anywhere in the world you have no competitors? As far as we know, There's... yeah. Well, in the real sense of your product definition, you have no competitors? Yes. The possibility of this product is amazing, right? So it is surprising. Honestly, I didn't know what evil Freddy show to expect when I first walked in and saw that thing sitting <laughs> We there, actually right? get that same reaction from yeah. everybody, so... Yeah, um, <laughs> this is... There's, there's a massive opportunity here. Absolutely. 200K for 25%. Was that an offer? I didn't quite get that. <laughs> I think they understood, and that's all I'm interested in. <laughs> So, Brendan, you're the numbers man. Yes. 200K for 33%. I'll give what you want, 200K for 20%. I've got businesses in the, in, the, in the health space, but one of our businesses has just been invested in by the Gates Foundation. So uh, I, I know the issues in that space, but I know the opportunity in that space as well. The fact that you weren't clear in, in some of your answers was really quite disconcerting. I can't get to the million dollar valuation, but I will make you an offer. 200,000 for 30%. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's just recap the offers. So Glenn's in for 33%, Steve's in for 20%, Janine's in for 30%, and I'm in for 25%. So what are you going to do? Can we have a talk about it? Yeah, you can go out there and have a talk. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, don't be too long, though, because the yeah. sharks are getting restless. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gates would just buy like a million of these for antenatal classes in, in Africa. Yeah. I am leaning towards one of the boys. Because I think they can bring a lot to the table. Steve's right on it, the right amount of money. But then I do like Andrew. Steve, he's definitely got a game plan, doesn't he? So what are you thinking? I could put money on this. Who do I, I think, think they're going to go I've got on? a feeling it's a bit of a Queensland fest. Yeah, I think it's... No, it's not like Queensland Fest. Is that they've, they've all researched and realised you just don't have any value and you're all pretty hopeless. All right. So therefore, they're going with me. So, Brendan, Sandra, what did you discuss? We were wondering two things. One, Andrew, would you consider coming down in yours at all? I might. Like Twenty. Yeah. Twenty percent. Two hundred. And oh, come on, do you want me or not? We're, we're the same. Yes. Are, you, are you rejecting my offer? Or no, are you we're definitely injuries? not. We're, our next question is this. Would you consider pairing up with any of the other sharks? No. No? I'll give you 20% now, otherwise I'm out in five seconds. I, I gave you what you're after. I'm keen for the business. I know how to take this. To, to answer your question, else. I'm prepared to do a deal at 20% with Glenn. Does that mean 10% each, is it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's 10% each for Glenn and I. We're both putting in 100,000. Don't say yes yet. See, see if I go lower than 20. Now, look, you've made it really clear you want Andrew, so I'm out. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Nothing lost on that one. Don't worry about that. She's pretty good at pouring juices. Oh. You've got the amount of 20% and you've ignored me. Interesting negotiation tactic, right? I'm very keen here. I, I actually I do know that I am the most qualified with respect to my medical investments, especially in the US. Uh, I'm the one who came out and gave you what you asked for. Yes, absolutely. Without, without having to come back and actually um, beg for a change in what they were doing. Sandra and Brendan, so, this is about you, no one else. You've got what you asked for, let's get going. This is a really hard decision. I think we're going to take the two sharks. I'll I was about to counter-offer. I'm done. So 
Sorry. That's okay. <gasps> oh, it feels good. Poor, it keeps whinging. It's tough. I yeah, know. Yeah, that's it's very tough. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you so much. Really Thank, you. Thank you. We're really excited. Well done. Please Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank Sorry, Steve. I just felt that they wanted Glenn, really. I think this is the maddest I've seen Steve all season. Oh, f He's really creepy. Oh. Oh, yeah, he's, he's really gone. angry. I can't believe it. Why is he angry at it? He thinks he's the best partner. Steve is pissed. Get the beers out. We'll all calm down. First up tonight, Leighton and Adrian. They're rolling out a solution for frazzled working parents. A little bit of nerves, but I'm just ready to wrestle a shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> G'day, sharks. My name's Leighton Allen. I'm 31 years old from Melbourne, Victoria. And I'm Adrian Rockman, 30 years old, also from Melbourne. And we are the co-founders of childcare and education company, Kids Co Australia. Sharks, today we are here to seek 375k investment for a 15% stake in the total business of Kids Co Australia. Sharks, we know that you represent five of the nine million working parents across Australia who have all of the same issue. What to do with the kids in the school holidays? Currently, research shows that there's, there's three main things that parents do, and you guys will be able to testify to this. Number one is pass them off to the grandparents, if we're lucky enough to, to still have them. Yeah, that's me. That's yeah. you. Thanks, yeah. Andrew. Number two is, and this is a growing trend that's really quite concerning, is bring them to work, throw them under the desk and slap an iPad in front of them, and that's really not a rich experience for, for that's child. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no judgment. <laughs> um, Number three, which is to take unpaid leave. And we believe we are here with an innovative and ultimately convenient solution. We run school holiday programs in the workplace. We created our own curriculum to cover all fundamental areas of learning. Art and craft, sport and fitness, science and food, and dance, drama, mindfulness. Every day at Kids Co has an exciting theme, and that theme sets the stage for the day's activities, allowing us to teach kids through story and, unbeknownst to them, be educational as well. <laughs> so, we welcome your questions and uh, hope to have you on board to help us change the lives of as many Australian working families as possible. Thank you. Good on you. That's uh, fantastic, Leighton and Adrian. Um, so it's 375,000 bucks for 15%. Correct. Correct. Now, we know each other, don't we? So, we do. Uh, in, in all fairness, you operate a uh, holiday program from yes. my co-working space in Brisbane, River Sea Labs, and my daughter enjoys a living daylight out Yeah, of we love Livy too. Awesome value, and I love the service. So I'd like to clarify, typically the age range for these kids is what? Primary school age, 5 to 12. 5 to 12. And the people you're selling this to is usually the employer, or are you selling it one-on-one -on -one to parents? Always the company. We go through the HR. So it's account. a business-to-business -business sale? Yes. Are you two the salespeople? At the moment, we're everything. All oh, right, OK. So how many sites are you currently running programs in? Nine companies at 12 sites across Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane. And then we've got another 15 companies who are running pilot programs in the next two school holiday periods. So tell me about these companies. What's the minimum size to make them run profitably? So we have a minimum of 25 children per day at $80 a child. And every kid after the first 25 that drop in is seriously better profit. Exactly. Absolutely. So you valued your business at two and a half million. Yes. Actually. So tell us about the revenue numbers, because yeah. I'm sure they're going to just blow us away. <laughs> well, for 2.5, it will. Yeah. yeah. So our first program, which ran in July of 17, yeah. uh, we've generated $20,000 in revenue. The following holidays, we did 75,000. And the December, January holidays just passed, we did just over 100. So $200,000 in our first seven months. We're now on track to do 175 and 230 in the two upcoming periods. So it's 600,000 generated in the first 12 months of trading. 
Um, 600 grand revenue. So how did you come to a valuation of 2.5 million? It's based on our future projections. So for year two... So blue sky. No, I wouldn't no, say so. We're very confident. Yeah. Really? Give us the year two. I, uh, this, will, this is far more interesting. Yeah, year two is $2 million in rev. How many sites? That requires 25 sites. And you've got those as contracts? No, so we have se we have three contracts in place for the next 24 months. So 450,000 till 2020 is locked in there. Um, there's, a, there's only two, two of you and you currently said you're doing everything, but you've yeah. got programs in every single state. Yes. Who's doing the selling in all states? Yeah, at, at this stage, it's planned to be us, and I agree. I, I hear your concerns before they come out of your mouth, that you're worried about the scalability of that. But for us, that's our real passion piece, that we, we plan to have the staff in place and with the right shark on board, the systems and procedures in place, that we can be the ones that can go out and actually sell in. So, Leighton, we get the passion, we get the market, we get sure. the product. But how do you grow a business? And, and at that valuation, you see, you're not actually addressing the answers of, from an investor's point of view. We bought that there's a viable business there. We bought the need, and we bought the fact that employers need to do more of this. What we're really challenged by is your valuation of 2.5 million, and can you execute to give us a return on our investment? Our, our goal between us for 2021 is to be 1 million in revenue, and 50 companies will, will deliver that for us. I think it's time, otherwise the sharks will just devour you <laughs> and there'll just be blood in the water. <laughs>There's a lot to like about you guys. I think your, your energy is infectious and I think you've come across a concept and business idea that is well needed in the workplace. But it's the valuation I can't get my head around. And you're valuing it as if you've got the income. I'm out. Thanks, Thank Naomi. Thanks for the feedback. Janine. That's Janine. Well, she wears red. <laughs> <laughs> that old trick. That's what you call shoot yourself <laughs> in the foot. Well done on getting something going. I can see how you're going to make a living. Hate your valuation, and you need to rethink your business model so you can scale. You need to own the brand, the marketing, and basically provide the customers, the systems, and then someone else needs to execute to your standards. That's the only way you're really going to scale. I think if you do that, you'll get there. But I'm not the partner for you. I'm out. Thanks, Thanks very much for the considered feedback, Andrew. That's great. We'll take that on board. Uh, as an employer of choice in uh, the Big Red Group, I absolutely see your application, absolutely love and adore it. We've got 100 employees and I'm curious to know, would that work for our size business? But we seem to have a lot of kids, so we will be a customer. But for this investment, I'm out. Yeah, thank great. you. Thanks, Naomi. So three sharks are out, you've got two sharks left. I can't get that Brecky Bomb song out of my head that you got my daughter <laughs> pitching to me. It was terrible. Brecky Bombs are great. <laughs> <laughs> she still sings it to me. Yeah, yeah it's great. <laughs> I, I'm worried about the scale too. So scale to me is, is how you actually replicate this. So I don't understand because it's a people business. And people businesses are, are, are mildly scary, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. And I'm confusing how happy a customer I am with how much I want to own a part of this business. Um, so but I'll, um, I'll dole myself out. Thanks, Thanks for coming back, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate your customership. One shark left. You know, I've spent a, a, almost a business career scaling up business in, the, in the multi site locations in a whole bunch of different industries. I know childcare reasonably well. You could really help us. I love what you're doing because it is it's so important to get employee engagement. So I'm going to make an offer. 375,000 is what you want. I see the risk and I want to be your partner because I've done a lot of the stuff that you've got to go through. So I think I, I, I de-risk it. So we need to be equal. $375,000 to 33.3333%. You came in here looking for a valuation of 2.5 million. That values your business at 1.126 million. What are you going to do?
Leighton and Adrian run a business that offers school holiday programs in the workplace. Glenn is keen to sign up, but his offer has slashed their ambitious valuation. So I'm going to make you an offer. 375,000 is what you want. I see the risk, so we need to be equal. $375,000 for 33.3333%. You came in here looking for a valuation of 2.5 million. That values your business at 1.126 million. What are you going to do? Can we have a second to chat? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go yeah. For it. Thanks, guys. Go out there. Whew. They just need a bit of help. Honestly, a couple of hours with one of us and their business would be fine. Are just at the moment not scalable, and the valuation's crazy. Yep. He's a perfect partner for us. He's got all the systems and procedures in place. He's in this space already. We're going to have to we naturally renegotiate. They're going to go for 25%, that's what I'm saying. And they'll lose the deal, because it well, doesn't make might. any sense. But that's what they're going to ask for. 33 back down to and 25. And then Glenn will say, 33, I'm not moving, and they will say yes. Or Glenn might say, well, I want some money back, and I'll go for 25. We'll see. Are you happy? Yeah. I'm happy. Right, let's, let's do it. Do it. Right on. Welcome. Thanks, guys. So you've had an offer from Glenn for 33 and a third percent for 375,000. What are you going to do? Glenn, firstly, thank you so much for your offer. We'd like to put in a counter offer of 25 percent for, you guessed it? Yeah. <laughs> of 25 percent, however, I don't know if you've guessed this part, with a 5 percent that will vest in 2021 if we have not hit that target and repaid the cash in full. Creative. Whoa. Nice. I like it. We back what we do. So basically 25% now and another 5% kicker if they don't meet their goals by 2021. So you get to 30%, not 33 and a third. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that deal. Throw me something else. All right, we're going to show you something else. Uh, in any one of your companies, we'll run two free programs <laughs> to the value of 20K. <laughs> OK, I'm going to make a counter. 375 for 30%. Do it or don't do it. Time's money. We'll put in our final counter, Alpha Glenn. Call it a deal. Shake hands, have a hug, maybe have a beer. $300. Uh, 300. <laughs> <laughs> $300,000 with a $75,000 line of credit. So you've now revised your offer. Yep. $300,000, you'll take $75,000 off line of credit for what percentage? For 25%. For 25%. And two free programs for Glenn's current corporate businesses. Correct. OK, what are you going to do, Glenn? <sighs> Jump on board, Glenn, come on. <laughs> Can I just go into the tunnel and have a think about this? <laughs> oh, do you need to phone a friend? Can I phone a friend? No, make up your mind. OK, let's get, get on with it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank you man. Fantastic. Well Thanks, done. guys. <laughs> Great presentation. Thank you, mate. Well done, well done, Thank indeed. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks, All man. the best. Thank you. Cheers, Thanks. partner. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good man. Oh, no. Well, they're well, happy. They bring that to the kids, don't they? They so didn't want that deal. Look at them. No. <laughs> Employers across Australia have to do more of this. It's a huge thing to attract and retain yeah, staff. I agree. We've got some great feedback from all of the sharks in there. Can't wait to put it into practice and yeah. really take this to the next level. Th their program is spectacular. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, Apart from the fact right. that he couldn't tell the difference between a Janine and a Naomi. No, that was. Understandable. <laughs> After you get the makeup slapped on and shit, you can't tell the difference between you two. Blonde brunette. Hi, I'm Jack. I'm Dan. I'm Lockie. And I'm Sam. We're all still studying at university, but together we're revolutionising our industry within Australia. Since we started in January last year, it's been a bit of a wild ride for us. How successful are you guys? Very successful. <laughs> These sharks want to get involved, and I hope they've got deep pockets. Yeah, get ready for a feeding frenzy. Look at that focus. First into the tank tonight, 
a team of fresh-faced high flyers. We've been fortunate enough to meet some great people throughout the process of building our company. The Sharks are, are definitely up there and, yeah, there's definitely a little bit of intimidation, but I hope that goes both ways. They were wearing Andrew's outfit. <laughs> Hi Sharks, I'm Jack Cullen. These are my high school friends, university colleagues and business partners, Sam Lewinson, Lockie Burke and Daniel Muscaratolo. Today we're here asking for $250,000 for 5% of Jar Education, which is a subsidiary company of our overall organisation. 15 months ago we founded an aerospace company which has had great success and now we want to inspire more students and more young people to chase their dreams. Jar Education provides programs to schools which allow the students to learn through engaging learning. We have professional resources developed by teachers for teachers to accompany our drone kits. We also provide in-class mentors such as final year aerospace engineering students to make sure that it's taught in a way that the students will understand. Right now, we, we've launched Jar Education last month, and in our first three weeks of sales, we've generated $35,000 of revenue. So we're asking for $250,000 to expand our sales reach, but to also expand our selection of programs within schools in Australia. OK, $250,000 for 5%. So you're valuing the business at a cool $5 million? Correct. Right. Jack, can you just make it very clear to us what the education is? Sure. Sam's uh, in Head of Education. So our education product is an eight, eight to 12 week long program. We're targeting year fives to year tens initially. And the way we've developed it is to replace classes that they currently take in digital technologies. Right. And the specific content in these products that we're releasing now is a build to fly drone kit. We did pilot programs last year with schools in Sydney that were extremely successful that we generated income from. Just, oh, just want you to clarify one other thing. You threw in an interesting word, which was subsidiary. Yes, I thought you might mention that. So in January last year, we founded J Aerospace, which is an organization that is focused on high-end commercial drone solutions. So we have multiple high-level contracts within that business to develop commercial servicing, commercial manufacturing within Australia. And we've also been having great success with the government and uh, certain government industries to continue to grow those commercial divisions moving forward. We're not looking for an exit in the holding company. We're looking to go to space. Uh, Hang on, Jack, you're telling us you want us to invest in an education facility. Correct. And you're gonna isolate off the sexy part of the business, which is the aerospace and all these government contracts and... We're more than willing to talk about the sexy part of the business, but um, from our research, it seems that the conglomerate's probably not quite the right fit for Shark Tank. Well, mate, well, mate you've seen, you seen Baker Shop's we're... bloody picture here, mate. Well, you're thinking conglomerate's going to be an issue. That's a bit silly thinking. Not isn't it? No, no, it's not necessarily that. There's just uh, certain things that we're doing at the moment that we don't want public. Oh, we're we we're sophisticated investors, I apparently, so we probably are allowed to know what we're going to miss out on and then maybe we can talk you into putting the whole thing I on the table. I think that might be a conversation we could have behind the doors if that was something we wanted to look at. Well, let's get profit then, because we need to know if you can actually even make a profit. Uh, so you're talking about profit for the overall organisation? Yeah, because the other one's been going for two and a half seconds. It hasn't just been around for two seconds. Jai Aerospace has raised over two million to date. Uh, yeah, that's raised. What's the profit? We've uh, made about $280,000 in revenue since we commercialised our products in Jai Aerospace and of that I'm, our profit margins are very good. We've gone above and beyond in making our company, moving it towards a proper organisation, introducing organisation charts and expanding our board with big four partners, ex-generals from the army and also a political expert. Uh, from Strategic Political Council has helped us build our business. <laughs> How old are you, Jack? 22. And you're all about the same age, I guess. 21 and 22, yeah. You guys should really have black suits and should be concealing weapons. You're from another planet. I mean, what kids of your age have political consultants? You're entering the hardest market ever, bloody schools. 
Yeah, it's very, it's definitely a very difficult industry to operate in, no doubt. And oh, it's good a strange. I'm glad that's not lost on you, mate. That's strange, fantastic. Um, it's a strange sales model compared to the industries that we operate in in our uh, parent company. I'm, I'm actually really worried about your lack of focus, to be honest. Your investors must hate what you're doing. No, so they. You've, you've, you've taken two million bucks, right? And you're now going to defocus that into education. You're a business out there doing top secret shit in the drone space, right? I don't know what you're doing. You haven't told us, which I think is quite rude, personally. So why is it you're defocusing down here? Education's been something we're extremely passionate about. Well, you can be passionate all you want, mm. right? What you're doing I understand is you, you, the you, you business be passionate case, about yeah. your social causes from a position of strength. But raising $2 million isn't a position of strength. A position of strength if you've got $2 million bucks from customers. Do one thing well. Yeah, right understand. now you're about to do two things poorly. University mates Jack, Sam, Lockie and Daniel want to launch their drone education business into the stratosphere. But Steve has brought them crashing back to earth. I'm, I'm actually really worried about your lack of focus, to be honest. You've taken two million bucks, right, and you're now going to defocus that into education. Education's been something we're extremely passionate about. You can be passionate all you want, mm. right? What, what you do is you, 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 you can be passionate case, about yeah. your social causes from a position of strength. But raising $2 million isn't a position of strength. A position of strength if you've got $2 million bucks from customers. Do one thing well. Yeah, right now you're about to do two things poorly, I'm guessing. I would respectfully disagree, and I understand Did from I? a commercial case where, the, where your thoughts are coming from, but we do think that education within Australia and the world is a significant problem. That's that different. Does it, is. it is, it is, but you're a drone business, yes. and you think, well, I'm also going to cure education. I understand what you're saying. I'm saying that it has the side benefit of increasing our skill base for aerospace, but on top of that, it has excellent commercial backing behind it. Just assume we've been in business before too, right? We probably understand how these things work. Just assume that for a second too, if you don't mind. Maybe we've been there before and maybe this is good advice. Just maybe think about that, right? Because you're coming across as a tad arrogant in the way you're doing things at the moment. I'm not trying to. I... Well, you're doing it successfully. Richard Branson has moved laterally through 40 companies. Richard Branson is a billionaire. He can do what the hell he wants, right? Mm -hmm. Really want to compete off Richard Branson? No. Let's get in this and whip him out, can we? Because that's a stupid comparison to make, right? Yeah. Understand who you are and where you're at the top. You're, you're exceptionally capable blokes. Make JAR Aerospace the thing you put all your energy behind, get filthy stinking rich, and then go and fix education. Well, the... that's how you're going to do it properly and not go broken both. I'm out. Thanks for the advice. Um... Guys, just walk me through the potential. So 10 to 15K per pro program sold, what's going to be your profit margin on that, on a program sold to one school? At the moment, our profit margin, which we are sort of reluctant to talk about due to our market, and I think if you were to invest, it would be silly for us to talk about, but I can say that it... It's obnoxiously good? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a reason you didn't offer us equity in the holding company? I mean, if you're valuing a subsidiary business which has hardly got started, valuing it at five million, that's almost a bit of a game. I feel a bit like, you know, you're the cat and I'm the mouse. I don't know whether you've got loaded revolvers in there uh, somewhere hidden, but, you know, it does feel a bit like a hijacking. So what's your real motive for being here? The real motive for being here is to get our program into every school in Australia and there is so, huge commercial so opportunity publicity. in that. You wanted some visibility and publicity. So you don't want an investment? No, we do want investment in education and we've been talking for over three months about subsidising it because we can't have the two brands intermingle. They're separate businesses long term. Okay. Guys, you are super, super smart. I'm out. So, Jack, you've got lots of answers. Yeah. Um, but the way that you've valued your business at five million for a business that has, I'm agreement, it's been in business for two months, I'm not sure how and when we're going to get a return. So I wish you well, but for that reason, I'm out. No worries. Guys, um, you know, you're young guys and you're having a go, so well done. You know, you've unfortunately put a stupidly obnoxious value on the hope 
that you're trying to paint here today. I would have loved to have heard more about your drone business. You're young, you don't know what you don't know and therefore you're just going to plough on. You'll be successful, I have no doubt. Thank you. But I'm out. Cheers. Cheers. Well, you have an incredible amount of poise and uh, intellect for people of your age. It's incredible. Um, and, you know, I, I, you don't make me angry. I know some of my fellow sharks have got a bit cross. I mean, you make me smile because I, I, I listen to your journey and I think it's amazing what you've done so far. Uh, I was out, you know, probably half an hour ago, but anyway. I wish you well. Uh, and uh, let us know how you end up. I'm sure you'll be rich and famous one day. Thanks for your time. Cheers. 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 Thank, you guys. Thank you, guys. Cheers. See you later. I think you're a bit harsh, mate. No. No, no it was they, not. They're going to be in the rally. They've, they've probably got a great aerospace business. Yeah, they're, they're just having focuses. a bit of fun. No, that's good. Good, bit of motivation. They did not come here for an investment. No, no. it was no. a game. That's why I said I felt like a mouse. I, I, I thought I was a shark, not a mouse. You're a mouse. For those kids, you're a mouse. You're just a toy. Uh, I'm just a toy. Toy. With our education business right now, it's profitable, it has a pipeline, and it's a commercial opportunity that any businessman would be silly to drop. Political consultant. I must Honey. get one of those. I, I'm... I need a couple of political consultants. I think we've got it wrong, Lizzie's, maybe. Next into the tank are Stacey and Lorraine. They've turned a stressed out mum moment into a fledgling business. We came up with the idea, we've designed it from scratch. And I mean, we did, we did it all from basically a spare room in my house in between feeding the kids. We believe that every Australian family should have it in their beach bag. Hi, I'm Stacey and this is Lorraine and we're from Minnow Designs. Like most Australians, we love spending time at the beach with our young families. And it was on one of these days, four years ago, we came across a problem. Our young toddlers just wanted to go exploring, but the sand was really, really hot and there was broken shells everywhere. We thought that we'd be able to find reef shoes in toddler sizes, but we couldn't. We decided to solve this problem. With Stacey's experience in consumer marketing and my background in fashion design and manufacturing, we went for it. Our first product was the Minnow Neoprene Beach Shoe. Inspired by wetsuits, very soft and pliable on a baby's foot, but it protects them from all the elements. And now we've got our Move On, which has got a hard sole, so it's for the older kids. It's got a more robust design, so it can withstand more terrain. We're very passionate about beautifully designed, well-made quality products for kids, and we've got lots of innovation in the pipeline. We launched in mid-2016. We have a strong e-commerce arm, which is very scalable, and we're currently stocked in 120 retailers worldwide, including major department stores such as David Jones. Today, we're seeking an investment of $70,000 for a 20% stake in our business to help fund our expansion into the US. So, who would like to make a day at the beach a little more enjoyable for Australian families and make some money on the way? <laughs> well done. Well done. Good. Really great pitch. It's fantastic. So you're after um, $70,000 for 20%? Yep. Ladies, I have to say thank you very much because obviously you've done some research. Yes, yeah. two for you. <laughs> two, two for me, so... Um, well, you should have three, should And, and these, are, these are, um... You probably should have three now, think about it, but that's all right. These, so these are size four for the twins, I take it, are they? For my yes. one-year-olds? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll be home tonight and give them a go. <laughs> give them a whirl. This looks great. The design's beautiful, the packaging. So congratulations. Mm. Now, they're very pretty. Thank you. But you said that you would like... An an investor to come in to help with your US expansion. Mm -hmm. You've only been going for 16 months. Is Australia done? No, no, it's definitely not done, but we're a very seasonal product. You have an online presence too, right? 120 yes. stores worldwide online, so why aren't you selling into the US now? We are. So we, we dropped in a thousand pairs, a trial run into yep. Amazon.com. We sold out in three weeks. What's the problem? Three weeks sold out, it should have just went whoosh, shouldn't it? The issue is it's four and a half months for us to get another boat on the water. By the time we'd sold out our thousand pairs, the season was over. Why is it seasonal if we've got kids that want to get outside 
really you should be positioning it for beach, park and, and anywhere they're going to run it. Yeah, I guess the thing with the soft sole neoprene is it is made out of fabric, so it's, it's designed for the beach. So it really is that seasonal. You're just aiming sitting in summer and that's it. But that's what we're finding. That's where, what we're finding where the sales are. And with our um, wholesale in Australia, with all of our boutiques, they're only buying into summer. What's the cost to produce? Landed in Australia, we're at 880. 880? What are you RRP for, please? 35. Oh, far out. Nice. Uh, wholesale? 15.90 on the soft sole and 20.45 on the hard sole. That's about normal for footwear. Yeah. So if work us through the numbers, what was your last year's sales? In 2017, our revenue was $135,000 with a 56% profit margin. In 2018, our forecast revenues are $360,000, scaling steadily to $1.5 million by 2020. And at $1.5 million, get me excited, what is likely to be the cash flow dropping out or the cash dropping out of that? That is a number that has just flown out of my breath. Um, does anybody have a calculator? Stacey and Lorraine are pitching a business that sells hot weather footwear for toddlers but they've just had a brain freeze. That 1.5 million get me excited. What is likely to be cash dropping out of that? That is a number that has just flown out of my brain. <laughs> um, oh God, I can't remember what we had to Does anybody have a calculator? <laughs> Here you go, calculate here. What number what, do we What are the numbers am I doing? So at gross, it's 63% on 1.5, and then 20% in marketing. 756. Is there seriously no one doing anything like this for, for toddlers? Not in Australia, no. But out overseas? There's cheaper brands coming out of China. So hang on, cheaper brands, but are, are they... They're not think, nearly as good quality, the they're made of totally there. different materials. It's only neoprene, with a bit of stitching in it. Theirs aren't even made out of neoprene, they're made it's out of like, like spandex. This is beautifully made, I can see that it's a quality product. And that's what we're trying to push, is our, is our quality mm -hmm. and our love of the design. Yeah. If you, uh, if you really take off and someone comes to you just to buy the brand, are you OK with that? An interesting question. Mm. Obviously not. <laughs> no, they haven't thought about it before. No, we haven't thought about it before. And not 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 straight away. This is still our baby at this point. Well, I mean, you, you get a little Kardashian baby to wear it, and then suddenly somebody wants two million. You. Okay, bye. You, yeah. My business. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. We'll move on to the next one. I mean, if you expect to be successful, that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let you know where I'm at. Uh, look, I think you guys are terrific, and you, your, your valuation's not unreasonable. I think you've done an amazing job on design, packaging, and you're both very credible. I, I just can't really get excited about it. I'm sorry. I'm out. I don't think the valuation is sensible at all. You know, this is still an emerging and evolving business that is yet to grow up into a real business that I can see that I want to invest in. So for me, best of luck, I'm out. Thank you. Uh, it, it is still early. I'm, I'm not going to confuse my love of the product and my desire for losing my daughter's feet with the desire to purchase your equity. That's a cop out. Um, I really, really wish you all the best. And thanks for coming in. And thanks for the gifts. I'm, Thank I'm you. out. Are you located here in Sydney? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm best in Sydney. Yeah. Given that you're local, I'm sure we could have a coffee occasionally <laughs> and I can support you, particularly around our experience about what we did in the US. I'm also happy to introduce you to big retailers in the US, which I can do. That would be, that would be absolutely Thank amazing. You. But for this deal, I'm out. Thank you very much. Janine.
I think your branding's great. It's the cash flow component of it that concerns me the most. For example, instead of going, I've sold all this in Amazon, now let's really go for it. Sold all this in Amazon, oh, I've got to wait. And online, the Chinese ones might look like yours, even though you think, oh, they're crap. <laughs> but there's so much to like. You've got a great eye for design, and you've got a great eye for solving a problem that's a real problem for little, little kids. <sighs> Guys, I'm sorry. Oh, don't. Go in. I'm sorry, I'm out. Janine. Lift them up and then drop them. <laughs> no, because I think you're doing a great job. Come back next year. If you've hit it out of the park, I'll invest next year. Okay. That's the deal. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thanks Goodbye. a lot. Well done, ladies. Hold me to it. I love it. I'd love to work with them. I'd love to. I don't feel mm. disheartened by that at all. Actually, I find it a very positive experience. So we'll see you, see you next, next year. year.